alchemy is a, a system, a, a practice, a way. Uh, it existed in the Middle Ages and a little later. And it's all in its authentic form. It's about the transformation of man from a being very far from his potential, a being who is uh, asleep, uh, distracted, unconscious, full of illusions, ego. This is what they meant by, when they use the word lead, the transformation of lead into gold is the transformation of undeveloped man into the man of full, full human capacity man of consciousness, of light, of understanding, of wisdom. All of the apparatus, all of the language of alchemy is a code having to do with the interior transformation. And of course there was imposters, there were charlatans, there were imitations, but it's completely wrong to think of alchemy as being mainly a primitive proto-chemistry. It was an aspect of a school, of a way, there are many paths, many ways. Uh, a spiritual discipline could be understood to be a kind of a, a strategy, a campaign against the illusion of the ego to lead a person to transformation. And this strategy can take different forms. There are different ways. Uh, the Sufis, the Zen Buddhists, the uh, Christian contemplatives, they all are different ways, different paths. Now, it, it was Gurdjieff who made this distinction that I find very helpful of basically the way of the monk, which is a way that starts with the development of a certain quality of feeling, of devotion, a purification of the emotional nature of man. And there was the way of what he called the way of the fakir, which is more involves the body, a certain work with the body, a certain way of overcoming the intrinsic resistance of the body and opening it to something. And then there was what he called the way of the yogi, which meant a development of the mind. But all these ways eventually lead to the same thing. And there was another way that he spoke of, which is what has been called the fourth way, ni neither of the other three, which was distinctive in that it engaged a human being in life as we live it every day. And a way of developing each part, the body, the feeling, and the mind, in relation to each other, in the midst of our ordinary life. All of nature is transformation, all of change. Uh, a butterfly is a transformation of a cocoon, of a caterpillar. Uh, this in interior transformation that we're speaking of <clears throat> is the transformation of the human being from a scattered, multiple, illusory state into a unitary being with a different quality of psychological force and energy and capacity, a, a different intelligence. And this takes place through laws that none of us can say we know. Uh, basically, you can say that transformation of human being takes place through the allowing within oneself of the action of a higher force upon ourselves as we are. And all of the way, all of discipline, spiritual discipline, the whole meaning of the way is to uh, make oneself available and open to something that comes from another level, from within ourselves and from the universe. All of sp authentic spiritual practice is a discipline of opening, of allowing, even when it's very strong, very rigorous, very seemingly very tough, it's all to help make something more permeable, more open in ourselves, in our very tissues of our body and our brain. This is an idea, this is a teaching that has been given in all traditions, including our own in the West. In one doesn't recognize it very much, 
but even in Christianity, which has the reputation of being hostile to the body. In the early Christians and in the great mystics like Meister Eckhart or Gregory Palamas, uh, you find very clear indications that one has to know and live from the whole being. Even Gregory has passages where he speaks very, very strongly that the mind needs to be in the body. He speaks of the need to keep the mind in the body, to keep the attention occupying the whole body. And this is something you don't find in our churches at all. It's been lost. And in Meister Eckhart, it's very much a teaching that it, to go within the self, deep within, there you find the source of all creation, God within. Now, this has been given lip service sometimes. The kingdom of heaven is within. But what it really means is something that uh, we're just now beginning to rediscover in our time as we understand what the mystics really spoke about. The important point, I think, to recognize is that what we call generally the mind in our culture is only one part. There are other minds, there are other sources of knowledge, other sources of perception, in the feeling, in the body. And all three parts, basically, need to be related together. And each one has its own source of its own kind of knowing. The body knows, the feelings know, and the head knows. Each each one of those three brings a certain kind of knowledge, and all three kinds of knowledge are necessary for real understanding of anything, the universe, ourselves, anything at all. Only a knowledge that comes from the three parts of ourselves is real knowledge, and we have been living with only one part, the mind.